Welcome to the No Guilt Fangirls Podcast, where liking what you like is never a bad thing. Here's your host and head fangirl in charge, Patty Holiday. Hey y'all, welcome to the No Guilt Fangirls Podcast. I'm Patty Holiday, your host and head fangirl in charge, and this is the Monday Movie Minute for July 15th. Now, every Monday, you know the drill, we sit around, talk a little bit about what movies came out over the weekend, what we saw, what we watched at home on the couch, uh, and always what happened at the box office. Sometimes this episode is kind of short and sweet. Sometimes there's a throwback to those old movies. Uh, Sometimes it's all about the hot new stuff that's coming out. (laughs) You know, it's like that box of chocolates. You never know what you're going to get around here. Yeah, something like that. (laughs) This week, we are talking about a mixed bag of things. Uh, Stuber, which is one of the new ones that just came out. Lion King, which I saw an advanced screening of, and it is coming out uh, later on this week for the, for everybody else. Uh, Never Ending Story. Yep, I went there. And a new movie called The Farewell, which you probably don't know anything about because it's not showing anywhere. And we're going to talk a little bit about that. But first... Let's cover what happened at the box office and uh, see what what made some money this weekend. Okay, so up first is Spider-Man Far From Home. No huge surprise there. I didn't think any of the new movies were going to uh, kick Spidey out of the limelight just yet. He's probably getting another good week or so at least uh, sitting in that top spot. Number two comes in uh, with Toy Story. Uh, You know, Disney. (laughs) Disney's feeling it right now, aren't they? This is this is a good summer for them. Uh, maybe not for anybody else, but Disney's not hurting this summer. And then number three was Crawl. I did not see this one. I don't know that I can sit through it. Ugh. I have a really weird thing with alligators. Uh, I think it's alligators in this one. Maybe it's crocodiles. I don't know, guys. Either way, they but they, they just kind of, they kind of creep me out and freak me out. So I'm not sure I can do Crawl. <laughs> but but I'll consider it. I'll think about it. Uh, Number four was Stuber, which I did go see, and I've got a little brief review for you on that. Yesterday, then Aladdin, Annabelle comes home, Midsummer in the eighth place, Secret Life of Pets, and Men in Black International is rounding out the top 10. Now here's an update on Avengers Endgame. I know know you were waiting for this. I mean, (laughs) you knew it was coming from me. Look, it's it's closer than I thought we were going to get. It looks like it's something like 7 million off, 7.2 maybe, 7.5, something like that. That's not that far. That's like two solid weeks. Two good solid weeks of movie going. I don't know, guys. Could can, can it happen? Are we are they are they going to finally kick Avatar out of that number 1 spot? Or is it finally just time to, to pull the plug on this and let it go? <laughs> I'm excited that it's so close and you know I'm going to be watching it because I can't let this go. I just can't. <laughs> but we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. All right. On to the movies that I watched this week. And uh, the first one I'm going to talk about is Stuber since it's the new one and it, and it just came out. <sighs> this is one of those movies that had a lot of potential in, in a lot of ways, but ultimately... It just fell flat. the The writing was not there, I, and I think that's where I'm gonna, where I'm gonna put the blame for it anyway. The story kicks off, and, and it's Dave Bautista, and he's this big cop, and he's um, got a partner, and she she actually gets shot and killed in the line of duty, and it's partially kind of his fault. You know, essentially, he's he wears glasses in the movie, and they come off in the middle of this the big fight scene, and so as he's dealing with survivor's guilt as the months go by, you know, you can see where this is going. And it's really kind of funny because when I saw that happen, it, again, this is kind of, my, my opinion is it just was felt like it was such lazy writing. It, it, they threw it at, your, at you. You couldn't miss where this was going. During this big fight scene and his glasses come flying off, my thought was, shouldn't a cop have LASIKs? Like, shouldn't this not be an issue in 2019? <laughs> Why is he still wearing glasses? And I don't know, there's probably plenty of cops that are still wearing glasses. But that was just my, my first thought. And sure enough, sure enough, that's one of his thoughts too, I guess, because uh, that's the whole premise of the story is he goes in and he does finally get LASIKs as he's returning back to duty. 
he gets it. And then, of course, at the same time that he gets the surgery done, he also gets news that the guy who killed his partner has been spotted and blah, blah, blah. And he's got to go find him. And that's why he calls an Uber, guys, because he can't see. And that's how we got this typical cop story wrapped in with a very 2019 situation where he is driving around um, with this Uber. Yeah. Uh, hijinks and deaths <laughs> ensue. And, you know, mostly mostly this movie was a lot of cheap, lazy jokes, to be honest. And uh, but I, maybe I was in the mood for that because I did laugh. Some of them landed for me. Some of them were amusing. So it wasn't a complete waste of a movie by by any stretch. It just, I think it, I think it could have been more. I think it could have been a really fun movie, and it it just wasn't on what I'd call a fun level <laughs> for me. This is kind of you know is one of those things where I I kept thinking it's a very 2019 movie in the sense that this was a very long commercial uh, for Uber. <laughs> Because Uber was mentioned, I don't know, every five seconds. It seems like they're they talking about um, about Uber all the time. Um, but at the same time, it was also like the worst Uber commercial because <laughs> someone like my father, who does not trust apps and he doesn't trust this whole get in the car with stranger things, he'd have looked at this and going like, I knew it. Nothing good can happen when you get in an Uber. So Uber, I don't know if this is a win for you or not. Uh but it, it just made me laugh with thinking along those lines. Now, what I did like about this movie, I liked the actors and I liked the acting. I, I thought they were all pretty solid and had no 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 major issues with, with anybody really on scene. Um, even the ones that were pretty one dimensional and, and kind of uh, expected, again, I'm blaming it on the writing, okay? Uh, but Natalie Morales is in this. Um, she plays Dave Batista's daughter, and she's wonderful. Dave, of course, we know he can be funny. He's He's got those comedic chops. Um, he is Drax in Guardians of the Galaxy. And who loves Kumail Nan- Nanjiani? Me. I love him. Uh, he's adorable in everything. <laughs> pretty much the shining star in this movie and in Men in Black International. So he's having a good summer. He's having a good summer. Now, I feel like Stu, a, a little bit at times, Stu is the, the the Uber driver who's got this terrible boss. I don't have a terrible boss, but Stu is this Uber driver who is kind of hung up on his ratings and he's always asking for these five stars. And I'm like, dude, Stu, I totally get you. I am always begging people to give me a good rating on this podcast and other places. Uh, so by the way, five stars, please. Um, <laughs> but it just made me laugh because he's he talks about it a lot and he's kind of like his driving force for a while. Now, parental movie review here. Is this one okay for kids? There's no real sex uh, involved in this movie. There is some nudity in a uh, scene with a male strip club. And there's talk of sex and uh, bad language off the charts, that sort of thing. But the big issue for me was actually the shooting and the, 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 the there is some blood and there's some, some gore that happens with, with all the shoot 'em ups that happen all over LA as they're on their little quest to find the bad guy. <clears throat> if you should happen to ignore the rated R <laughs> scenario here and take younger children anyway one thing well, there is one scene to know about was kind of concerning for me I knew that if I had taken my daughter who's 14 and she's not squeamish as far as like you know shoot him shoot him up type movies or, or cop movies or whatever that's not what would bother her but what would have bothered her would have bothered her deeply and greatly was there's a scene of a big shootout that happens in a veterinary's office and there's animals in there while all these bullets are flying all over the place there are animals and you see the animals due to movie magic you don't see any animals getting killed at least i did not catch any catching a stray bullet but i mean you should have. They should have if this was real, which it's not, I know. But if it was, they they would have absolutely been in harm's way. And she would have lost it. That would have been, she would have like focused on that. She would have never looked at past anything else. And it would have really upset her because she's just that much of an animal lover. Like she understands bad guys are bad guys, but don't mess with the animals, right? Uh, <laughs> so that's just one thing I wanted to tell you about on the off chance that you decide to go and take kids to this movie. Uh, so Take that for what it's worth. I don't know. The movie's all right. It's not the best. It definitely got some laughs at 
moments. Um, I think some of those laughs were, were like the ad lib moments because they felt like they were kind of at the end of the scene and just kind of added on by the actors. And they and I really liked them. I liked those those moments a lot. So again, sorry for the guy who wrote this. I just was not a fan, but these actors kind of pull your movie through. So <laughs> I can sum it up by saying it's it's a little messy. Uh, it's not cohesive. And my feelings when I left were also pretty messy. So there you go. All right. So after the huge success that was my Stranger Things binge, please tell me that you have watched this by now. This this next movie is not a spoiler, but it is tied to Stranger Things. It's why I ended up watching this movie this weekend. And, and so I'm not going to spoil what exactly happens in Stranger Things with the never-ending story tie-in. But there was a tie-in to the never-ending story, which was a movie from 1984. Uh, 84, I think. Pretty sure it was 84. Okay. So a friend mentioned this on her Facebook about wanting to watch it again. And I just chimed in with, ugh, I hated that movie when I was a kid. Like, don't, don't put yourself through it. And she threw it back at me and she said, why don't you watch it and give us a review on it on the podcast? So, all right, here it is. For anybody that thinks they want to revisit their childhood and watch The NeverEnding Story, you can see it for free on Amazon Prime. Obviously, you have to have Amazon Prime to, to, to watch it for free, but if you do, it, it's out there. Um, there are ads uh, with it, so it's not like free, 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 but hey, I didn't want to pay any money for this movie, so it worked for me. Amazon Prime. Okay, Never Ending Story. It starts with the best part, <laughs> which is the song. And then it goes downhill from there. Like, I could have turned it on after hearing this song, and I would have been happy. (laughs) Guys, I just didn't, I didn't like this movie, and I remembered why, and I remembered I didn't like it when I was a kid. Um, And so I struggle with the fact that so many people my age talk about how much they love The NeverEnding Story, and how wonderful it was, and everything. And even here as a grown adult who tried, tried to, I didn't, I didn't. Now, that being said, Maybe I need to read the book. The book might be, it might really have just been the visuals that I was grappling with because it, it, even as a kid, it annoyed me. But now, of course, years later and how dated everything was, it was really just not my, it was not my jam at all. Um, Basically, the storyline here is uh, this 10-year-old kid, his mom just died. He's left with his dad. He gets bullied, and in order to kind of escape from the bullies, he runs into this uh, bookstore where he happens to pick up a magical book uh, that tells the story of a young warrior who has to stop the nothing, which is a dark force, from engulfing the mystical world of Fantasia. Uh, Anybody remember any of that? I honestly did not remember the storyline until I started watching it. All right. So that's that's the basic premise behind it. And, and it sounds like it could have been really cool. My issue with this is it's terrible and awful and sad and scary at points. And I kept thinking, wow, kids, like this was geared towards kids. I want to say this was rated PG. This might have even been back in the day before PG-13 existed. <laughs> oh my gosh, I'm so old. Uh, but this was for kids. And I remember we went and saw it again. I didn't even like it when I was a kid. But I just want to point this out. If you are a parent thinking that you might want to let your kid watch this, maybe they watch Stranger Things and they ask the questions about what happened in that moment. And you think, oh, yeah, let's all watch uh, The NeverEnding Story together as a family. Now, I have no judgment. If you choose to do so, that's fine. That's your family. You do whatever you want to do. But I just want to point out uh, there are some, you know, pretty concerning moments, difficult scenes. There's this beautiful horse that dies that I don't know that anybody has gotten over that yet. Um, and the the kid is is being uh, chased by werewolves like throughout the whole movie. Anyway, it's just not, just be careful if you're going to watch it with kids. It's actually probably better for adults, teens and ups uh, than it is younger children. Anywho, um, the thing that bugged me the most about this show, and it bugged me back then, and it still to this day bugs me, is what was considered groundbreaking special effects of the day. I hated it. 
and I still hate it. It still gives me like the heebie-jeebies. I can't do it. I've never been like a puppetry person outside of the Muppets. The Muppets are happy puppets. I can deal with the Muppets, but I can't deal with things like the dark crystal. Ew, ew, ew. Like all of it's just ew for me. I can, can't do that. And that's the feel of what was going on with this movie too. That kind of um, special effects. I know it's an old movie and back then it was a big deal, but I also vividly remember, and it all came back to me as I was watching this, that's what my problem was with it back then. I didn't like it then. I don't like it now. Yeah, so that's my thoughts on Never Ending Story. (laughs) Allison, I did it. You're welcome. (laughs) So yeah, maybe it's a better book than it is a movie for me. Uh, The Lion King. I just want to touch on this really briefly. If you want a little bit fuller of a review before you go to see it, I did cover this on a daily-ish a couple of days ago. So, you know, scroll back and and find that one um, if you want to hear what it has to say. I'm pretty sure that despite what any critics are saying, and myself included, that you're going to go regardless. I mean, it's Disney. It's what we do, right? Uh, And our kids are hot and bored and cranky here in the summer and the theater has air conditioning in it. So yeah, we're going to go sit in the movie theater for a couple hours. I get it. I totally get it. I totally get it. I think by by way of, of slight review this morning, I am going to just say my Gen X and older millennial friends who have strong feelings about the original Lion King, um, lower your expectations a little bit. And and by, by saying that, remember that live action is harder to pull off with uh, CGI animals involved. Uh, and they are all CGI'd, um, except I think I read that there was one scene that was not, but I, I don't know what that, I don't know what it was. I couldn't pick it out. I couldn't tell you. But, but the rest pretty much is. The CGI is great as far as realism of the animals, you know, how they look, uh, their surroundings, all of that. It's the talking and the laughing and the crying and the smiling and the emotions of these animals that has problems. <laughs> it, it just, I don't know, it just loses a little bit of heart, in my opinion. That opens on Thursday. I figure we can talk about it some more next week if you guys want. At least we will cover what it does at the box office, which I am sure it will uh, do quite well. Can't imagine that it won't, but we'll see if it meets expectations. All right, now the last movie to mention is one that I did not see, but it did open this week. Uh, And I wish I could see it. I wish I could see this one. It had rave reviews from Sundance this year. And those type of movies, you know, don't always get wide play. uh, But they end up being the ones that we we wish they did, right? And this one is called The Farewell. I mentioned on, I don't know, one of these episodes before that I am pretty much obsessed with Aquafina. <laughs> uh, I love her. I love her. I love her. I love her. She is just so great. So great in everything. And I watched this trailer probably two weeks ago and got super excited for this movie because it showed me a completely different side of the comedic Aquafina that I know and love. And I was kind of, sh- I hate to be this way, but I was kind of shocked at how how good she was, how the, the, her range and her depth. And again, this is just the trailer. I sat there with goosebumps and tears in my eyes over a trailer. Yeah, the farewell, guys, the farewell. So I really wanted, I really want to see this one. Um, it is not playing, sadly, anywhere near me. I think it's out in like uh, four theaters. <laughs> nationwide. I don't know. But um, it's just, it's not out very much. So I'm, I'm hoping my fingers are crossed that it will end up making its way. I mean, I don't live in a, I live in a big metropolitan area. I can drive to the theater to see this. If anybody wants to send it my way, I would be happy to do so. The basic story is that this is, a, 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 it revolves around a Chinese family that discovers that their grandmother only has a short while to live. And I guess that's a culturally commonplace thing that family decides not to tell the grandmother how sick she is. And um, instead, they all put together this wedding and they all gather to say their goodbyes without saying goodbye at this wedding. And it just looks, it looks like a real tearjerker. And I don't usually like those kinds of movies, but there's something about Aquafina in that trailer that pulled me in. Uh, plus, you know, I took a peek. There's a whole bunch of reviews out there from Sundance. 
everybody loved it. So I, I'm, I'm down with this one and, and hopefully I will get a chance to see it before, you know, it ends up on Netflix or whatever. All right, guys, that is, that's it. That's all I got for the Monday Movie Minute this week. There is a new podcast episode coming out on Thursday. It's going to be all about Schitt's Creek. Uh, that's a sitcom that is, God, would you call it a sitcom? I don't even know what I'd call it. Wow, I just, I, that came out of my mouth and I was like, whoa, that's not a sitcom, but it is a sitcom. But anyway, Schitt's Creek, it's amazing. If you are not watching this, it is on Netflix. And trust me when I tell you, this is a bingeable, 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 bingeable show. Once you get past probably halfway through season one, definitely by the time you get to season two, you'll be hooked. I don't even think it'll take you that long, but I'm just saying it, you know, it does take a little bit of time to get going. It is so good, though. It is so fantastic. But we have a whole fangirl episode on Schitt's Creek coming out on Thursday. It is pretty much my favorite show of all time at this point. It's it's bumped all my old shows out of the way. And I am now living, breathing, eating uh, Schitt's Creek and Dan Levy because he's amazing. Um, yeah. All right. So that's that's coming out on Thursday, I think. Now, don't forget to subscribe. Throw up those five stars. Uh, see, here I go. I'm sounding like Stu from Stuber. <laughs> but really, there's a reason why. It helps other fangirls find the show. And, you know, it's no fun to fangirl alone, right? And it is also super appreciated by me. So thank you in advance if you happen to do that. All right, guys. Thanks for fangirling with me on the No Guilt Fangirls podcast. Hope you'll be back to fangirl with me again real soon.